All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to Rangers Central. And the Rangers beat the Arizona Coyotes 8-5, to five, a cardiac Rangers affair. Lafreniere nets his first hat trick. Jonathan Quick comes the winningest goalie in American-born history there. I didn't word that right, but regardless, Chris Kreider gets 300, a night for history with the Rangers, and a night where they played some of their best offense that they've played all season long in terms of capitalizing on scoring chances. Vizmelka couldn't stop a beach ball. The Rangers also did generate a good amount of chances in this one. Didn't play the best defense, but the Rangers get the two points at the end of the day, which honestly, with the way that my mental health is from the for the past 48 hours in the sports world i'm gonna take that all day of the week right now because i am just not in the mental state right now to even to even care because the mets ruined my freaking life you got the eagles trading one of my favorite players on the damn team and then you also got the uh new york knicks lose it to the damn spurs all that's just gross and vomit worthy but the rangers at least get two points get a win and make me feel a little bit better after all this garbage that I've had to deal with, which I didn't think they were going to. It was a cardiac Rangers affair, like I mentioned, which by the way, get your cardiac Rangers shirt link is in the description. But yeah, Rangers get two points. Before we jump into the recap here, leave a like on the post game show on your way in. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Ranger fans, and turn on your notifications so you know I upload or go live on the channel. So like I said, the defense didn't even play that great because I mean, Jacob Trouba was back in the lineup and I didn't love that. Uh, I didn't love that. And it's not that I, I wish an injury on a player. It's just that this lineup was rolling without Jacob Truba. But my bigger gripe was the fact that they elect to put the two of them together, that being Truba and Miller, back together. And I don't understand why they decided to put the two of them back together with how good Miller and Schneider were. And Trouba's coming back from an injury. Why not shelter his minutes, ease him back in by playing on the third pair? And Zach Jones is playing some of his best hockey. Why not put Jones and Trouba together? To me, it was a layup. It was a no-brainer. But for whatever reason, they decide not to do that. And the defense didn't have the best effort at all, to be completely honest, to be completely frank. And the Rangers had a lot of issues managing the puck early in the game, a lot of issues moving the puck up the ice. And Arizona, it was pretty much all them at the beginning of this game in the first period, it was all Arizona with getting the chances and getting the pressure as well. The Rangers in the first period in general didn't really get a lot until all of a sudden they did start to get a couple shifts where they were getting shots on goal. There weren't really any high danger chances. They were firing shots from the point. Some of them trickled through. They just couldn't bury them right in front like Rossovic had a chance. Rangers did make it one to nothing, though. They are the ones to open the scoring as Lindgren to Panarin. Um, and then a nice little pass to Lafreniere, a rush chance, and he doesn't pass it there. He does not pass the puck for once. Lafreniere on a rush did not pass it, and he snipes that thing over Vizmelka's shoulder. It was nice to see Lafreniere with some confidence there. Shoot the puck. Nice to see a Ranger in general shoot the puck on an odd man rush because how many times have we screamed at our damn TVs that they pass the puck in situations like that? So very happy to see that, and in general... With the way the rest of the first period went, I mean, Goudreau took a dumb penalty. The Rangers killed that off. Granted, there was a couple of things on the penalty kill I didn't like, like Jacob Truba just screening his own goalie, letting Kerfoot almost deflect one in. Um, but outside of that, I mean, the Rangers, the rest of that period, not a lot happened. The first 10 minutes, like I said, were not good for the Rangers. They didn't get anything going with the forecheck even at all. And then they started to play a cleaner game a bit. And then they towards the end struggled a bit, but the main thing with that period is they struggled with moving the puck up the ice. That would not be a problem the rest of the way, especially the second period with in terms of them, not breakouts, but in terms of moving the puck up the ice to get rush chances in general and capitalizing on rush chances. Rangers make it two nothing very early. This was not a rush. The Rangers, the first two minutes had the puck the entire time in that second period. And the Rangers just tired them out. And at the end of that shift there, they didn't get a lot of chances, but Fox sets up Ryan Linger in the score as he sneaks in to nothing. And Lafreniere would get an assist on that one. First of many points for him on that, on the night shout out to him, which again, we will talk about Lafreniere's performance later, but Rangers continue to put pressure on would be two to one. though, as the coyotes would get one Kreider not moving his feet, but a puck, um, 
wasn't moving his feet. Clearly, the Coyotes set a pick there is what I meant to say. And they don't call interference at all. I don't know why. But Charlie would end up scoring. Not a good shift there from Chris Kreider at all. But that should have been interference. Pally, I don't know why they didn't call that there. I digress. The Rangers answer right away as Trocek gets in on the forecheck, keeps the pressure going. Lof- uh, or Panarin goes in the help and sets up Lafreniere, who gets a bounce to him, walks in, and buries that one. Three to one. Alexi Lafreniere, which again, we're going to be saying his name a lot tonight. Would be three to two, though, after. Sorry that I don't have much to say between all that. Um, your boy was cooking it up. Uh, but regardless, it would be three to two. Truba. Terrible breakout attempt. Then he's on, he's in nowhere, in no man's land, on an island, and Keller just walks in and backhands one. Jacob Truba aggravated me to no end, and then Coley's just cooking him the next shift. And then there was just a couple defensive laps. Like after the Coyotes got their goals, it was a really rough period for the Rangers. They did get a goal, but unfortunately the Kreider goal with the rebound there, they check for goalie interference, no goal there. And yeah, uh, like I said, the Rangers were just getting dominated pretty much the rest of the period. Jones had a couple nice plays on one-on-one battles, but it would be three to three. Lafreniere, Lovely did offensively tonight. He's got help. Brayden Schneider on the boards there though. Zach Jones loved his game tonight. He can't be chasing there. And then Busad was all alone to net the puck there, three to three. But like I said, that period, really weird period because of the fact that the Rangers, after that goal, they just allowed way too much in their own end. But they also generated a lot of chances. That was their best period in terms of generating offensive chances. Third period rolls along. Another weird period because they do allow a lot of pressure. It's just the fact that they didn't allow a lot of quality chances. That's something that is okay because at least you're not allowing quality chances but i do want to see this team play more of their shutdown style of game in the neutral zone where they're chipping the puck in for checking all that stuff like i talk about non-stop but it would be four to three uh like i said the rangers were just inviting a lot of pressure but then they end that all of a sudden, and then they come through the neutral zone and lingering behind the net to Rosovic to Kreider in front. Kreider bats it in or tips it in, if you will, and that made it 4-3. Kreider then gets his 300th goal instead of having to toss that puck back onto the ice from the bench, and that made it 4-3. Would be uh, five. Well, first of all, puck just trickles through. Miller has to clear it. Shruba with a bad uh, breakout after that. Thankfully, that didn't lead to anything, but it would be five to three when the Rangers get a clean breakout here. They get a rush chance. Lafreniere to Jones. Easy goal. Shout out to whoever put money on Zach Jones scoring because eh, you you want some good money. The odds weren't high. That's what Nick was saying. And I saw someone on Twitter put two dollars on 140. Good for them. And the Rangers would make it six to three. Dursey slips. This is on the penalty kill and Barkley Goudreau scores. Barkley Goudreau scores a shorthanded goal. Six to three. Did not have that on the bingo card. And it actually ended up being a meaningful goal because it would have been a tie game otherwise. So, you know what? As much as I clown Goudreau, he got a he got a big goal there. What ended up being a big goal because it shouldn't have because the Rangers take a penalty and Lawson Krause would score as you got Meek and Cryer just puck watching here on the PK. Then you it's six to five. The Coyotes continuing to get pressure. Val Mackey with a shot. I think that's he's the one that shot it and it went off of Cooley. Don't know where Jacob Truba is on the play. Six to five, cardiac, Rangers, a fair, but the Rangers would end up piling the goals on as Cocker with a nice takeaway. Two Panarin scores on the empty net. Lafreniere with the damn hat trick. Finally, it's about time he got a hat trick. Happy for him, as I was very critical of him going into the season. You guys know that. And I am i couldn't be any happier to be eating crow on that one because he looks so good this year. He's making an impact on the ice. And like I said, give him the power play minutes at some point. Give him top power play minutes, and he's going to get 80, 90 points easily because he also did get robbed of a lot of points earlier in the year. And if he starts ripping the puck like he did on that odd man rush goal that he had, It's going to be a nightmare for other teams. And he put himself now in a spot to where he could potentially get 60 on the year. If he's a point per game guy the rest of the year, which he's putting up a lot of two goal nights alone. Forget just points, two goal nights. 
all I'm saying is it's very possible. If it's popsicle, it's possible. But I digress. Um, like I said, defense in this game, not good. Jacob Truba was just not good in this game at all. He needs to be a lot better. I don't know why that pair is together. Need to be broken up. He needs to get his minute sheltered at least. The forwards do need to help on the back check as well. There were a lot of times where they were not helping out in terms of the defensive play. Like I said, the Lafreniere one where he's not helping on the boards. Too many guys being open in the slot. Too many uh, point shots as well. And then screens in front of the net. Too much of that. They got to clean that up. They got to clean up managing the puck itself in general because they spent a lot of the game mismanaging the puck. And how many times have we talked about that lately? That all has to be cleaned up for this team. But if they're going to explode this way offensively, I will love it. But again, it's got to come with quality defense, at least respectable, because there's a lot of shaky defense in this effort. But I digress. And yeah, uh, the the worst part of this game probably, though, is the camera angle. That's a very good comment as I was scrolling through, getting ready to read the comments. But yeah, uh, big two points, like I mentioned, because this team... Needs home ice cannot emphasize that enough. Now they're at 104 points. Hurricanes in action right now. I believe they're winning. Last I checked, they're winning. They're up two nothing on Montreal. So there you go. There you go. So I don't know. Um, it's going to be a tight race still to the end here. So Carolina, assuming they win, 101, but they the Rangers still have a game in hand. Not a bad spot to be in. I'd like them to win the East and they're putting themselves in a very good spot to do that as well with eight games remaining here on the schedule. I'm liking the odds of uh, winning the president's trophy here, or at least the East. I'd love if they could find a way to at least win the East, but you know, Dallas might make it difficult for them to win the president's trophy. That's the only thing. So yeah, really don't know if I have much else to say the upcoming schedule should be light too. Like they come back home to play Pittsburgh, New Jersey. The thing that's going to be tough though is some of these are rivals like the Islanders, Devils, Penguins, Flyers. All those teams are going to play, play them hard. But the Flyers and Red Wings are the only two like quote unquote competitive teams remaining. You should be able to beat them though. You really should be able to beat them. But never count out the fact that the Rangers do make games tougher than they need to be. You can't count that out ever. So, yeah, just hope for better defense next time. And, yeah, let's see what you guys have to say in chat. Leave a like if you haven't. Subscribe. Turn on your notifications. Now let's see what you guys have to say. Makes up for the Mets loss today to an extent. Uh, I There's a lot with the Mets right now. Two games in, and there is so much to dissect with this group, this Mets group, that is. I don't even want to get into it here because this is a Ranger stream. I'm at peace right now a lot more than I was earlier. Because I tweeted it out. I was so close to having the worst 48-hour span as a freaking sports fan that I can imagine if the Rangers lost this game. But the Mets, the Mets. Last game just getting better and better. Goes to show you how much confidence it can do for a guy. You're not wrong, Justin. Yep, Hattie for Laffy. Congratulations to Quickie and Laffy. Shouldn't take eight goals to beat the Coyotes, but I'll take the W. I agree with that, hockey dad. What a great game. Too bad that arena is so horrible. Uh, great for laugh. Cried quick reaching the milestones. I agree with you, Craig. And yeah, the camera angles. I get a small arena. You got to figure something out with those camera angles. You cannot have those cat. Like if I was a Coyotes fan, I'd be so aggravated having to watch that crap for 41 games because that's a terrible camera angle. And I get that why they have the small arena and everything. I'm not saying that I don't, but like, that camera angle is terrible. Offense is great. Defense sucked. A win is a win with many milestones. Yes, Chris. And yeah, like it felt like it was on the freaking roof. The camera. Pretty much playing in a high school gym. <laughs> My God. Oh, yeah, no, they can't play the way they play defensively in the playoffs. They they can't do that. I'm with you on that. I'm not excusing them for the way they play defensively, but I'm just saying I am so... I, I'm so aggravated with what's transpired the past 48 hours that the defense 
was so poor that it didn't even bother me to that to this extent. Believe me, it is a bother, but not to the extent it normally would be, thanks to the fact that the past 48 hours have just been so brutal for me. But nice little early birthday win. Appreciate that, Rangers. Why can't the Rangers play any defense? Good question, James. I got no idea. If, got no answer for that one. Trocheck a plus six. Yeah, Trocheck. Another under a piece of the line, of course. He had an under a game because of his line mates carrying in terms of point production. But most of the time, that's been Laffy who has a big A in the points and has kind of just been the under the radar wingman type, if you will. So. Yeah, you, you did say laugh was about to explode. Credit to you. And I'm absolutely here for it. Who gets the Broadway hat? It's going to be quick. It's so tough because, yeah, it should be laugh because it's his first career hat trick. It's going to be quick, though, because of the fact that he made, like, really, really big history tonight. Like, being the winningest American-born goaltender is a very... Tough thing to do, and he's going to get it. Yes, yes, I've been beating this drum not all year because I won't pretend that I have, but the past month or two, I've been saying this that, like, this is off season talk, but if the Rangers do, or if they are early exits, I do not see a rhyme or reason why Kreider cannot become expendable. And unless Kreider has an insane postseason, that changes the story. But this is all assuming certain things. But all I'm saying is that there's no reason if Kreider plays poor, especially come playoff time, and they are early exits, there's no reason why Laugh can't take his role and Kreider becomes a bit more expendable. Take the W, and it was nice to see the offense explode for eight goals. The defense was not good at all. Good for Laugh. He deserves a hat trick. Yeah, I agree with you. And good for Quick becoming the all-time winningest American goaltender. By the way, how dumb of a word is winningest? I'm sorry, but winningest has to be one of the dumbest freaking words. Yeah, Rangers didn't get a power play tonight, which is very interesting, but nice to see them actually produce offense without relying on the power play. I see that at least. Because that's something that they just uh, typically don't do. We're not accustomed to that. Yes, congratulations to laughing. Quick, camera angle sucked. Yep. So many milestones tonight. Uh, Kreider laughing quick, but boy, was that an abysmal defensive effort, especially from Truba. Can't continue to happen. Yeah. You guys are getting on the defense more than me tonight. That's out of character. But no, I'm with you guys. Like, the defense was terrible tonight, especially Jacob Truba, which. Oh, God. Jacob Truba. Jacob Truba. Yeah, the Rangers need to lock it down when it was 6-3. to three. I agree with that. The fact that they didn't sucks. Laffy is playing with confidence, even as passing all the way across the zone on Lindgren's goal. Yeah, that, that pass, too, was such an underrated um, play that he had. Arizona has a bright future if they could build a barn. Oh, a thousand percent. They have a very deep prospect pool. They have they're stockpiling on draft picks. Arizona has a very good future ahead of them. They definitely do. Although I I don't know if uh I don't even remember their coach's name. I don't know why I'm blanking, but I don't know if he's the guy or not. But Coyotes still do have a bright future. I like what they're doing with their rebuild. Yeah, I don't get why they went back to the old pairings either. I just don't. Why 
Why am I using this Coyotes logo? Because that's the one that's on their jerseys right now that they wear. Yes. Hit the like, Rangers Nation. Hit the like button. Yeah, no goals by Mika. None. Laugh, my man. Yeah, way too much stick work and no bodies, um, body play in the defensive zone. I agree with that, Steven, entirely. Uh, I don't know if you typed too much in the chat, Craig, or if there's a word that you put in it that you can't use, but try typing it again, and maybe it will, maybe it will be fine. I don't know. I can see if it's in the YouTube chat here again. You know, I don't see it. You got, you're going to have to try typing that again. Yeah, I've been patient reward with Lavi's play. Can we try to be patient with Cockdown and see if he finds this game? Hate to give up on these young guys. Robert, the problem is, I don't know what level Kako could get to. I hope to be wrong about him too, but listen, he's a fine bottom six player right now. But, yeah, I didn't like VC's game at all tonight. Do I think there's a chance Vitrano comes to the Rangers in the offseason? Probably not. I don't think the Ducks are going to move him. Too many guys wide open in the slot. Agree. Cardiac Rangers shirt arrived today. You wore it, and they won. Love to hear that, Kel. Love to hear that. If it wasn't for the missed point opportunities early in the season, Laffy could easily be at 70 to 75 or on pace for it at least. If he has a strong playoffs, we could potentially see him get to 80, 90 points next year, especially if he gets power play one time. Oh, a thousand percent. And I would absolutely love that. Yeah, Laff has to be on the power play. Dimitri, I'm telling you, man. I am telling you. Like... Uh, imagine it. I don't want to harp on it, but imagine, Dimitri. Uh, just imagine. Not to go all Justin Timberlake on you, but just imagine. Jonathan Quick on setting the record for the wins. You do everything you can not to think about it, but it's there, so it's kind of a good feeling to get. What's really important is trying to win the division here, win the conference. Love the quote too, but say say the Stanley Cup, Quickie. I know what he meant, but say it. Oh yeah, the refs' mics too are terrible. Why do they have a small arena? Because currently the Coyotes are in a situation where they got kicked out of their old arena, um, and they tried getting an arena, a uh, gang an arena approved in Tempe, I believe it is which is where they are now with ASU. That got shut down, and now they're trying to find a new home in Arizona. So while they're trying to build a new home and find a new home, they're, uh, they're currently playing at ASU as a temporary solution. Kind of like the Islanders when they were splitting time between Brooklyn and the Coliseum as UBS was being built. That's kind of the similar situation going on. Although it is taking a bit longer, unfortunately, for the Coyotes' sake to find a definitive home and get like get something going in terms of construction wise for an arena which does suck for them and i do feel for uh coyotes fans i know people are going to make jokes about the coyotes not having a lot of fans but i do know a couple great coyotes fans matt if you're watching this az sports guy shout out to him he makes great youtube videos and he talks about the situation a lot and you know a guy like you see the passion that someone like him has and it's like listen you might clown the coyotes so much and you might just call them pathetic poverty whatever but then you see like true passionate fans that like we are with the rangers with the coyotes and a guy like matt who makes those videos and you just see the passion he has for the coyotes and you just, you could tell he'd be so devastated if he lost his hockey team. Like, I just feel for 
uh, for that whole situation if they end up having the move. So for someone like his sake, especially, I hope that they don't have to. The Rangers were 10-3-1 March. Obviously, you want some of those performances to be better, but that is a very good record, especially with how we said March could sink them. A thousand percent, Matt. Couldn't agree more with that. And that's what I was saying, that that's going to be a huge measuring stick for this team, and they've handled it pretty well. Yeah, Truba was not good tonight. Where can I find the Viagra meme? Where is it from? If you want, I could uh, send it over to you. Because, or if you want, I could play it and then screen record it because, you know, I wouldn't say I'm feeling it right now, but, you know, why not? My dick is so hard right now, I'm never going to need Viagra. There you go. You can screen record it now if you want. At least they have the Diamondbacks. Yeah, Diamondbacks are very good right now. Canes won't stop winning, yeah. Uh, no, that's not the Phoenix Coyotes logo. That's their current Kachina logo that they use. Didn't like hearing the howl five times. I agree with that. Yeah, they let up too many goals from the slot. Jacob, you're... Guess is as good as mine. I don't know what's going on with Truba at all. Because he did play good early in the year. That's what's really infuriating. And now, I don't know. Like, I was starting to turn my feelings about him a bit, too. Like, and I'm very anti Truba, but the with the way he played early in the year, I was like, you know, maybe he's changing my mind a bit. And then. Now you've had this. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate that. And salute to Sweden. Feel that the type of game the Rangers play isn't really con um, conducive to Kaka's game. I could really see him doing well on another team like Carolina or Florida. Justin, that I agree with. And that was one of my reasons why when the whole conversations came about with Gensel, why I was on board with the idea of moving Kako for Gensel because realistically, like, listen, he's been a fine bottom six guy, but like realistically with the way the Rangers have been replenishing these bottom six players at will lately. And if it costed a lot of assets, then, you know, that's a different conversation, but say Kako was like the centerpiece of the deal to me. I didn't hate the idea of moving him, especially because they could have got Rossovic either way for the third line. And then next year, you got Othman coming up. You got guys like Berard in the pipeline. I didn't mind it. Like, I felt personally he's replaceable, but hopefully he proves us wrong and he somehow turns the page next year. But regardless, um, that's neither here nor there. But I agree with you that, like, I question sometimes, too, the fit. Strike alike. Yes, Christopher, strike alike if you haven't. Rangers play two more games before the Canes play another. They got to, uh, they got three games in four nights. Got to put the division away. You are right. Laugh for MVP. And let's see what the magic number is right now, actually, for the New York Rangers to win the Metropolitan Division after tonight. Seven. So if Carolina somehow chokes, that will shrink to five. Don't think it's going to happen, but the Rangers officially cannot finish lower than second now and it wasn't going to happen either way it would have took a massive collapse but now it's official so the rangers are locked to finish top two and they clinch first place in the metro if they win if carolina loses they will need three more wins to clinch a, uh clinch the division if carolina loses they need four or they need three wins and an overtime loss there although i don't know if the tiebreakers play into effect after that so just get four wins how about just get four wins so we don't have to worry about that and then we could just talk about this team clutching the division and rest guys up and get ready to go for april 20th which by the way when i talked about the playoffs last time i was mentioning how they start on the 22nd 
thank you. Whoever's decision it was, if it was Gary Bettman, you did something right for once. Thank you for moving the playoffs to the 20th. It made no sense to start the playoffs on a Monday when you got a Saturday lined up for you to start some playoff hockey. And I know you're competing with the NBA at that point. Who cares? You're going with them toe to toe for ratings the entire postseason. Start on the damn 20th, which is what they're doing, and get me to MSG right away. Let's go. And how about clinch a spot too so I could purchase some damn tickets and get ready to go to see them play the Washington Capitals in their barn or the Detroit Red Wings or maybe the Islanders if they sneak in. Who knows? But get me to it. I'm I'm getting to the point where I'm tired of, the, of regular season play. I'm getting to that point right now where it's like, get me to the playoffs. Sorry, just reading something quickly. I got to answer a text quickly. Matthew scored a goal. Nothing new. What's happening around the league? Leafs up 3 nothing. Buffalo still stinks. Carolina up 2 nothing. It's going to take a miracle for them to lose at this point. Pittsburgh's up on Columbus, Tampa Bay up on the Islanders. So probably there goes to that chance. Jets and Sens tied, Caps and Bruins tied. Sharks up on the Blues. That's an interesting one. Might be the Flyers are struggling. That's a good point, too. The Flyers are struggling a bit. New York Rangers game one playoff party on a Saturday, my house. Hey, go wild, go wild. And, and the playoffs, uh, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Now the fact that I, you know, tomorrow's the day. Now I could start spending a little extra money at the stadium, spend $16 at the stadium. You know? Probably more like 32 or like, you know, 100 when if they're disappointing me. Now that tomorrow's my birthday and now that could happen at the garden. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I was giving Trub a major credit um, earlier in the year. He was playing very well. However, I should have known that good period from him was an outlier. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. We'll see, Joe. We'll see, Joe, if they are ready. But, hey, sign me up if they're going to dominate from puck drop on saturday april 20th or sunday april 21st give me the 20th don't make me wait the extra day i hate when the rangers have to play the second day of the playoffs starting give me day one something about the vibe playing on a on the first day officially of the playoffs versus the rangers first game being on the next day something about the vibes of them playing on the actual first day is just so much there's something about it. There's something about it. Like, I don't know. I, I don't sleep well when I watch other teams play postseason hockey and I got to wait the extra day. Kreider's making six and a half million per year. Got to save the money for JD City Field debut. The Mets. The Mets, the Mets, the Mets. If the Rangers win the division, they will play on the 20th. I don't know if that's how it works or not, is it? Let's look at previous postseasons to see if that's how it works. Let's see the schedule for last year. So, 
Game one was on April 17th, Panthers Bruins. Bruins, obviously the top team in the East there. Lightning Leafs, the 18th. Yeah, you're actually right. Yeah, you get the first day if you win the division. Good call. Good catch on that, Matt. I at least hope they do it that way this year. I'm going to double check and make sure by looking at the year before, because I thought the Rangers in 2022 had the first day, even though they were the uh, two seed. Yeah, see, like Florida, number one seed in 2022. They got May 3rd, but Leafs Lightning was May 2nd. But on the other side, Carolina was May 2nd, and then it was May 3rd. I thought the Rangers played the first of the two. Rangers were May 3rd versus Pittsburgh. So they probably do. Did the were the Hurricanes the best team in the East that year, or was it the uh, Panthers? Wasn't it the Panthers that year? Panthers, yeah, they won the President Trophy. Duh. All right. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it really matters. I don't know if it matters. I think they they either do that or they do like one set of the one and twos and then two threes each conference, something like that. I don't know. I don't know how they do it exactly, but. Listen, well, if you see similarities, I'm I'm on board with that, Joe, but we'll see. Don't think that's going to happen, Joe. I think if they're going to splurge on a free agent center, they're going to wait for McDavid. I truly believe they'd wait for McDavid. And I like Dreisaitl, but I'm sorry if you're able to hold it out because this team will still be competitive without him. If you could hold it out, unless Mika's really bad, obviously, that changes the conversation. But if they can wait it out for a Connor McDavid, I'm just saying, you gotta. You gotta do that. McDavid Alordi. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen, though. I don't even want to get my hopes up for that. As much as I'd love it. As much as I think about it sometimes. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, Random Aussie. You're not wrong. Not at all, but... I am going to wrap up the post game show here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, watching everybody. If you celebrate Easter tomorrow, enjoy that. So enjoy your day. Enjoy the holiday. Spend time with family. Meanwhile, I'll be uh, watching Mets baseball and Knicks basketball. But yeah, uh, leave a like on your way out here. If you did enjoy it, subscribe. If you guys are new, especially if you're Ranger fans, turn on your notifications so you know when I upload or go live on the channel next. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good night, everybody.